You ready? Are we ready? Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to another live stream on this Monday morning if you're in the U.S. My name's Heidi. And I'm Toby. And this is Crypto Tips. And this is the weekly live edition of Crypto Tips where we give you a little bit of crypto news and a lot bit of global news because as you all hopefully know by now, there is a lot of that going on. So, uh, hi everyone who's in the live stream real quick. I'm gonna give you guys a shout out. Um, hey from Belgium, hey from the UK. Uh, Vegas, of course, luckily happy to hear that you're not actually seeing any troops on the ground enforcing um, that military life. Uh, Germany, again, from Silk, from Southern California. Cool. Hi. Cyprus. Hey, John. John, I went ahead and made you a uh, manager person in the live stream. So if anyone is too chilly <laughs> in the live stream, go ahead and take care of that. Yeah, and you see Jim Cramer in there, just kick him off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and Alberta, Canada. Nice. Okay. So hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad you got the notification somehow. Uh, however, you're here from Wales, representing the dragon spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. My best um, friends from Wales. Yeah. So we have a lot to talk Berkeley, about. Egypt. We're going to... Egypt, Puerto Rico. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, it's really awesome how diverse people yeah, are there tuning definitely. in. Definitely, love to see you guys saying hi in the comments. So today we're going to be talking about things like stable coins, things like the digital dollar, things like um, what, uh, what oil crashing. Yeah, maybe that that's We've some slight news, that. and but also universal stuff. basic income. But crypto first. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, hog the mic here for a second. Um, so let's see, let me get to the right thing. All right, <clears throat> so talking about Tether, you know, a lot of people think, or you know, correctly or not, but there's a lot of assumptions being made regarding correlation between the amount of Tether being created and pumped into the market and the subsequent price of Bitcoin going up. Um, whether that's actually connected or not, uh, we're seeing a lot of people take interest in stable coins, whether it be to kind of avoid the volatility that could be happening in the crypto markets, or um, maybe it's because they want to, you know, get exposure to things like the U.S. dollar compared to um, if their government fiat currency isn't the U.S. dollar, if it's something like the Brazilian real or South African rand or uh, Australian dollar, uh, what? Peso, There's Mexican peso. So many other different fiat currencies are really having a hard time. Um, and so maybe some people are getting uh, some exposure to the US dollar through the thing called stable coins, which are essentially cryptocurrencies pegged to uh, you know the value of the US dollar. Um, there are stable coins that represent other currencies as well, but you know Tether has been a dominant uh, coin on the market. It represents like 98% of the trades with Bitcoin. It happens with Tether. Um, so a lot of people move in and out of Tether. So I mean, there there is a lot of controversy on Tether and oh, all these sure. other coins. Yeah, but a lot of shady also, things have happened But there. there's also a lot of controversy on the US dollar. <laughs> and, you know. So, that's my yeah. take on it. No, like, I've... I'm, if if you're gonna like I don't I don't know what's more dangerous putting it into say Binance and put it into Tether and expecting um, uh, Bitfinex to to survive or or uh, putting it into a bank you know like it's all risky pick, pick your uh, yeah your your risk I believe they know? call it counterparty risk yeah lots uh, of counterparty risk yeah. re regardless of which currency you hold and which bank bank you're in or whether it's into uh, exchange or not yeah very similar um, risks t being taken there. Um, but so uh, I, if you're curious, I, if you want to do some digging on my channel, I've done some a video on stable coins and what's been happening, what has happened in the past between Bitfinex and Tether uh, and all that stuff. But so anyway, today... Um, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. So Tether's Man. market cap soared $2 billion since March, which represents the biggest monthly inflow ever. So again, it's either people... Either way, it's people participating in the cryptocurrency market. Um, and, you know, whether they're there just to get exposure to the U.S. dollar... Maybe they're going to be, you know, kind of more in tune with what's happening in the crypto space, and maybe they're going to be seeing these other 
uh, positive movements with Bitcoin or Ethereum lately, uh, or you know any other coin that might get their interest for whatever reason, um, it's all in my eyes a good thing because it's getting people more exposure to um, the opt-in voluntary kind of currency that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin represent. So I mean, I hmm. you have to think about like if you're going to hold U.S. dollars like into a bank or tether. I mean, personally, I'd rather hold tether because at least it can go to 110 to the dollar. I've seen it happen mm, where it's true. gone up to, I think, one, a lot of 116 trading. or something. Really? I, feel I, like th- it, I think it was see, that. It's, it can get as much as you might want that to happen. Don't count on swinging, it, but swing, it can happen. Swinging up or down, like they're... Stable coins are relying a lot on faith, <laughs> uh, just like the US dollar, but it, it's essential, you know, it's uh, pure focus is to be stable. So price swings, either positive or negative, could spell really bad things for stable coins. Um, there's been other stable coins that have existed that have died because they couldn't come back from that lack of faith because their peg failed. Um, so let's see. <laughs> All right, John, I understand. Um, uh, Okay, so (laughs) I was getting distracted by the comment box. Uh, So speaking of, you know, trying to make predictions with crypto and looking at stable coins, there is a, oh, I got it made way too small. Let's see, sorry, multitasking here. See if I can get this figured out. One second. Okay. It's fine. So there's um, a new indicator or new indicator for me, but there's an indicator referencing the supply of stable coins, the amount of people that are holding stable coins on a crypto exchange and assuming that this is assuming, of course, that the people who are holding uh, stable coins on an exchange are doing so because they want to enter and put in a, in a position to hold Bitcoin. So they're pretty much calling this the stable coin supply ratio as like uh, an indicator of the future, you know, liquidity or um, yeah, into Bitcoin. So uh, that that's it too. It's like people who are holding these coins is. And also a huge benefit of this crypto space is the speed at which you can trade a coin for another coin and the liquidity that is found on this crypto markets. It's very easy. Uh, so if that is is what someone wanted to do is to move from, let's say they just wanted to gain exposure and get into Bitcoin, they could. Um, so it's it's all good, I think, in, in here. Um, now let's moving on to talking about, you know, exposing people to cryptocurrencies uh the u.s is this is not a cryptocurrency it's a digital dollar um but they're saying that you know if you are number one they're trying the u.s is trying to boost or have this bill passed to uh boost the stimulus checks going to individuals from 1200 to 2000 each month until at least next march for it's like the next year um and to help provide people with this uh, aid even quicker, they are trying to implement their digital dollar. It hasn't passed yet. Um, they're trying to get this through, but they're saying that it will pass very soon. Well, they tried to. They tried to earlier, but um, they took too long, and the the dire, you know, scenario for the U.S. economy and you know the Fed or whatever, whatever they were doing was the. The funds to help that get along ran out before it could pass. But so they're trying again. And so it says no later than January 1st, 2020, the secretary shall offer all recipients of boost payments the option to receive their payments in digital dollar wallets. Boost recipients receiving their payments through interim boost cards shall instead receive a Federal Reserve account for debit cards and be given the option to sign up online for fully operational digital dollar account wallets. So what they're saying is if you don't want to wait around for the check to come in the mail, which has taken weeks for some people, and as many people in the U.S. live, you know, paycheck to paycheck, some not even making it that long, uh, you know, a couple weeks, a month waiting for some money won't won't cut it. Um, so that's they're trying to, you know, kind of 
it's a tricky way to get people into the digital dollar. And I mean, if the US were to unleash the digital, do- digital dollar, it would be in a forceful way, like there is no other option. And, and especially when they come out with universal basic income, which we'll oh, discuss a little bit later, that. yeah. that's gonna really help with them putting stuff in, or money, or currency into people's bank accounts. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but this, like, I don't know what is going to be required of people to participate or to pay with this or to maintain their account. You know that they're going to, in case you don't know, they will be tracking everything you are doing with this money. Um, and because that is what they want, um, control. And digital, cur- digital currencies like this are not cryptocurrencies. They aren't permissionless. Uh, they aren't decentralized. Uh, they're not all the beautiful things that represent um, you know, the freedom that can be found in the cryptocurrency space. So there is a market difference between any kind of central bank digital currency, CBDCs, <laughs> and Bitcoin or Monero or Ethereum. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's not exciting for me to hear about this digital dollar being rolled out and people again being in desperation to receive it, probably not knowing what the heck they're doing or what they're really, um, you know, paying with or receiving. But um, there it is. Uh, so they're they're pushing for it again, all under this emergency uh, scenario that this pandemic and quarantine has um, put us in. Um, so speaking of the difference between this and Bitcoin, we have this amazing quote. By Frederick Hayek. Let's see if I can zoom it out for you guys. I hope he actually said this. I'm not sure. It kind of it seems like it's way ahead of his time. Um, and it, and maybe Satoshi saw this quote, and he's like, "Oh, maybe that's a good idea." Uh, so here he says, uh, "We can't have a good money again." before we take the things out of the hands of government. That is, we can't take it violently out of their hands, especially not now compared to the the weapon differentiation between, you know, uh, citizens and the army. Um, But all we can do is by slum, sly, roundabout way, introduce something they can't stop. And if that that happened is a beautiful quote and it has happened and it was the slow grass uh you know uh the slow really uh organic peer-to-peer kind of growth that bitcoin had in the beginning that allowed it to disperse enough so that it had the strength of a certain amount of decentralization um, that it couldn't, now it can't be stopped, which is such a beautiful thing. Andreas Antonopoulos has many quotes uh, describing why Bitcoin can't be stopped. I have videos on like the greatest hits of Andreas Antonopoulos for those of you who need a little bit of a reminder what this space is all about and the strength that can be found in decentralization. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and, and, yeah, so we have that tool now. Even and it will continue to survive whether people trash talk it enough, call it dead. It's not. There is nothing fundamentally about Bitcoin that represents it dying off anytime soon. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see what's here. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to pass it off. Let's get it. If you guys are enjoying these live streams, if you like these topics we're talking about today, we certainly appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, if you want to have uh, some links to the articles that we are talking about today, they are down below in the video description. I was sure to give you guys those today this time around. So hi, everyone who's in the comments. We're all great to see you here. 132 people going strong. That's beautiful. All right. (laughs) Uh, Now let's go on to what Toby is going to talk about. Okay. So oil's down 40. I mean, it was down like 45, 46% today. When we were, when we were going over this, not even like an hour ago, when I made that video for Instagram, it was like 38%. Yeah. 36, 38%. So holy volatility. It's dropping like a rock because there's like, there's so much oil in the world and there's nobody using it. So they've run out of uh, places to hold the oil. So what do you do? You give it away for free. So what does that do? So, um, with oil dropping, that decreases the amount of do- uh, dollars in circulation. So that it, that like 
that gets that liquidity crisis even worse. So I expect this thing to, this is just fuel to the fire for the dollar at the moment. Nice analogy. You know, so yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, it just keeps dropping, man. Like, this is crazy. I've never seen, I think this is like, this was, this is like 1970 lows yeah. right here. Like in my entire lifetime, I've never seen, <clears throat> I've never seen, oil this <laughs> cheap ever um yeah. and so i mean we can actually go here let's hmm. check this out so i know it's cnbc but their their uh user interface is pretty Richard easy Branson to... needs a government loan if he needs a government loan yeah we're all in trouble <laughs> okay so let's look at the let's look at the markets so the markets are aren't down too much they're 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 down probably like maybe a percent you know so with that said oil is down you know um uh, up a little bit let me see yeah oh. yep um so dow jones is down 229 points all right this the the 10 years down hardly anything or down a little bit but considering this okay so I, I watched this guy named Gregory Manorino. He's got a lot of good things to say. But one thing I do disagree with him on is he says, and I, I was I was in agreement with him last month until they came out with unlimited QE. And I'll tell you why. So he says the market will be dictated by the 10-year and the, uh, the oil price, where I disagree with that completely. I think he can throw that theory out the window now because it, that's all it is is a theory now considering that the fed has unlimited qe they go into the market they buy up the whole market i mean come on the dow jones should be down 10 to 15,000 points today i'm serious it's only down 200 points give me a break with oil down to 1970 lows in one over one swoop like this is crazy um so with, with that said like i i think that that's one thing that is missing out of the equation is that there's no free market zero free market it's the fed buying this entire market up they need to keep it up um and yeah, so this is the Fed pretty much bailing out the market. And I mean, you're going to have article after article. You'll you'll see later on down the line, I'll tell you right now that people will be like, this is the end of the free market. It is the end of the free market. And, you know, it is. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, so uh, even like Canadian oil uh, went to the negatives. <laughs> you know, so that's... But it's interesting moving from like the stages as oh oh we're not going to make a profit off the oil that we're getting now they're worried about the cost of storing it and it's not even worth the cost of storing it anymore they, they can't afford give that it much there's they have no no room at all they've run out of money yeah. and now they have to give it away because they can't afford to store and it this is what you get when you shut down the entire global economy <laughs> so uh okay so the imf um says the world will, will very likely experience worse recession since the 1930s. Well, it's not a recession, it's a depression. Hmm. Uh, they haven't lost their job, so that they, they call it a recession. But what about the people who say depression requires a long length of time? No way. Give me a break. You have, go, I mean, potential 33% unemployment by second quarter, plus 22 million people losing their jobs within the first three weeks. Give me a break. This is a full-blown depression. This is... Recession, get that out of your mind. Ain't even a recession, not even close. I'll keep going through this and you'll see why. Okay, so over half the world wants um, a bailout from the IMF. So um, yeah, so mm -hmm. this is just shows that the entire world it's is global. starving yeah. right now. And and imagine what this is. One. Oh yeah, imagine what this is going to do to supply chains and stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you thought that virus was bad, you haven't seen anything yet. This virus is yeah, it kills some people. But you know what? The amount of people that this global depression is going to kill because these assholes have decided to go ahead. Sorry, these guys have decided to close down the global economy. Like mm. that's just ridiculous. Like 
they're, they're killing a lot of people, a lot more people than any virus would ever kill. Okay, so airlines getting bailed out. Um, yep, that, that's it. They're getting bailed out by the government. So, so governments will own airlines like I've been saying for the past month. I said the government will nationalize entire industries. They will nationalize everything. And that's what they're doing with unlimited QE. They can print up as much fiat as they want and go ahead and buy up everything. They're going to buy up literally every. They're buying up BlackRock's ETF. Like they're bailing out billionaires while the, you know, small businesses have run out of their loan, like mm -hmm. their, their loan allotment that they were going to get. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see where your government is, is putting your country right now. This yeah. is why I say get pissed off because this is really serious. Um, I mean, I have a lot of, I, I have a lot of friends who think, okay, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be fine. You know, like just give us some time. But once the virus is done with, you know, once it, the, the curve ends or whatever, you know, everything's going to go back to normal. <clears throat> I think that's just naive. Like if you really think this is going to be normal afterwards, I got another thing to tell you mm. because um, th this is why I'm here because I want to be able to at least protect some people here and tell them what to get into so that you're not like the 99% of people that are going to be absolutely slaughtered on this. So let's move on. Okay, so um, the Federal Reserve is bailing out block BlackRock's junk ETF, debt ETF, and several others. Um, so this is them bailing billionaires out. And, and um, it's that, that comparison of Wall Street versus Main Street. They have denied loans to Main Street, and they're actively purchasing, bailing out Wall Street. You're seeing that in the stock market, still holding strong. But yeah, while yeah. you and your neighbors are all unemployed, Exactly. So if you're ever questioning, you know, what side the government or, or the Fed is on. Yeah, you know uh, who they work for. Around. You definitely know who they work for. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Banks, they understand what's happening. Banks understand. So banks are starting to cut their lending to households. Uh, it could be, it could be an ominous sign. It is an ominous sign yeah, because it's not a good like they they see what's going to happen in the future, they see that there's going to be mass layoffs. And I'll, I'll go into what just happened right before we started this mm. in, in a second uh, with somebody, a giant company letting off huge amounts of people. Mm. But um, yeah, so this is going to, this is going to be like a, a domino effect. You're going to have this, you know, uh, unemployment, like crazy, like people are just getting fired or laid off. And then you're gonna have real estate absolutely get obliterated. Mm -hmm. You will have, it will be decimated. Like I'm not trying to fear you. I, I've been telling my friends like, hey, if you are in escrow, like I've been saying this for a, over a month now, I'm like, if you are in escrow or like about to wanna to purchase a house, like get out of it, like get out of it. That's what I tell my friends. I'm not telling you guys that, you guys do what you want, but you know, like I, real estate is going to get slaughtered. And uh, I mean, I, I've even told a couple of my friends, hey, I know you just bought this house. You know, you might want to consider selling it. Or even if you just if even if you've lived, been living in it a while, you might want to consider selling it before the rest of the masses decide to dump their houses on the market and maybe buy some Bitcoin, <laughs> gold and silver with that. Yeah. Save your money for a year and a half and then go ahead and buy three houses, four houses for that price or more. Yeah. I mean, this is the time like it's it's a sad time. Yeah. But I would not waste this opportunity. Like in 1929, there was more millionaires made during the Great Depression than any other time in history. Like this is the time, people. This is the time. If you're ready, I mean, you'll be able to help. You will become fabulously wealthy to, and you will like you'll be able to help your friends and exactly. family out. Yeah. And that's what that's the whole point of this. So, um, yeah, I mean, well, it's like the, they've been encouraging this whole mindset of, you know, don't save uh, by encouraging taking on debt. 
by, you know, the inflation rate of the U.S. dollar, it uh, doesn't exactly encourage you to save your money knowing that it's going to be worth less down the line, so you better spend it now. Um, and for those who kind of fed into that and weren't necessarily, you know, the most read up on what could happen if things fell through with that debt, uh, now they're left kind of freaking out because they haven't saved anything. So that's what we're always trying to encourage you is to, you know, just save away for a rainy day. Hopefully you've been doing that and, you know, you're in a position to, like you've been saying, take advantage yeah. and benefit yourself and, you know, help help others around you that you can. So it, it pays to be, you know, counterintuitive to what the government and the media are telling you. Yeah. And here you go. United just reported this. They reported a $2.1 billion dollar loss and they're gonna fire 100,000 people once bailout loans expire 100,000 this is just United Airlines hmm. crazy like this is just I mean it's just proof in the pudding that we are not in a recession recessions don't have numbers like this I'm sorry um, well, you don't have to apologize it's not your fault yeah so even okay so now that you know that we're talking about, you know, these stimulus checks or whatever. Dead people are now receiving twelve hundred dollars, and their families. It's being totally responsible with the money that they're giving exactly. away. Exactly, the printing money. They yeah. just don't even care. That's why they're they don't printing, value print, print, it. They're print. just, yeah. Burr. Easy come, easy go. Okay, so <laughs> here's how you, your treasury secretary. This is the people that run your money supply, pretty or currency supply. Okay, they are so. Like on another world, they have no idea what you are experiencing because they're already mm. filthy rich, you know. So now they, this guy thinks Steve Mnuchin, your Treasury Secretary, says, "Oh, ten, twelve hundred dollars will last families, families up to ten weeks." Especially if they live in oh, New York, oh my gosh, or man. California, or somewhere where the the cost of living is, you know, skyrocketing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even in Indonesia, that would be hard to live off of. Give me a break. It just, yeah, it, it just means you know he has. He probably hasn't gone to the store to buy anything himself. He probably a long time. never bought anything in his entire life. He's probably had butlers. Which means he's really good at managing his own money because he's always had someone else do it. Yeah. So probably. Um. Anyways, okay. So home home builder um, confidence index takes biggest monthly dive as coronavirus or the virus slams economy, and this is just. Like just more indications investors of the future know. of you know confidence in the future. In investors know, big money knows, housing is done, done. So they're getting their money out. They know exactly what's happening. I'm just seeing if there's any questions real quick in okay. the comments. What should I get into then? Bitcoin. Well, we've been saying silver. Every time we do these live streams, gold and silver has been uh, has a lot of potential. We think. Absolutely. And yeah, just I mean, for, it's kind of a byproduct of utility like the gold, and, and gold yeah. mining. But yeah, it's, it's you know, Bitcoin. The, the only arguments I have against gold and silver is um, the COMEX and the LBMA, which are essentially run by the Fed. Um, well, everything's some uh, central banks that they, they pretty much control the not the supply, but they control the price. There's actually something called the London Gold Fix. If you Google or uh, DuckDuckGo that, you'll be able to see uh, what that's all about. So that, that's the one argument that I have against it because they have pretty much full control over the price of uh, gold and silver right now. Um, pretty much, I would say. I don't see how they're going to let go of the price right now because if they let go of gold and silver, that means they've let go of the dollar value. Like, I mean, that's uh, it's the canary in the coal mine. Uh, international liquid. Could governments not shut down internet, but shut down some ports that Bitcoin use to transmit data? Can Bitcoin developers change that port so Bitcoin could survive? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how exactly they'd be able to pinpoint... Uh, uh, Running running a Bitcoin node is something that you don't have to be announcing. Um, a lot of the information out about how many Bitcoin nodes exist are only because of those who want to make it public that they run a node. Um, so Bitcoin is incredibly decentralized in that sense. And 
Yeah, you can't shut down Bitcoin because they also have a satellite up. And you can also, if worse comes to worse, set up mesh networks, which are pretty much independent points of contact that you can create yourself completely, uh, you know, anonymously and privately and make connections to other. There's a, a real strength in the the dark uh, web <laughs> or like uh, the counter the counter there's always good, the dark web is the free market free that's yeah, all exactly it is. yeah the black market black I market free market that's to. all it is yeah um and the f the harder that a government will push to try and stop something as powerful and as freedom giving as bitcoin or cryptocurrencies the people who are you know uh deep into this space uh and who have been a part of this space for over a decade now uh, will not roll over easily to see it die off because some government decided to try to kill it. Um, but, I mean, you have to understand yeah. that governments are very big, right? <clears throat> They're huge organizations. So imagine, like, it's like David and Goliath. <clears throat> so you have, like, all these coders that don't work for government that can move around, that are flexible, that, are, mm -hmm. that, that, that have creativity, you know? When you work for government, you cannot be a, that creative. You're stuck looking your big brothers looking over at, on you you know what i mean so the most creative people in the world aren't working for government they don't want that that's not it's not worth them no matter how much government pays a, a incredibly creative person they can never buy them out they're either they're either not the most creative or they're doing it because they have to because they're in some kind of legal trouble and they're like bound to work for the government so it's not either way it's not exactly inspiring their best work yeah uh, compared to those who are independent that that that's why people from silicon valley are now leaving in droves to, mm. because they don't want to work for a government agency it's pretty much what they're doing to spy agencies <clears throat> now so yeah. um uh... and 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 some of the best coders in the world like bar none are working for us i know that for not a fact. us personally no, but yeah, for, for us everybody the good guys. here yeah that's um <clears throat> someone said freedom. isn't crypto useless unless you can spend it yeah uh jim that's true uh you can spend it <laughs> um if someone chooses to accept it you can spend it there is certainly a network that facilitates the transactions of bitcoin <laughs> uh the speed of it and the yeah uh immutability of it um, so yeah. Do you uh, think we'll go back to the gold standard? Uh, that's Absolutely a not. No. no way. Not a chance. Has there ever been an indication of like going backwards? Of Gover currencies? Governments. No. Once they have feel the control of pure fiat, yeah, why would they... pure unbacked fiat, they'll never go back. Because all they could, why never. Why would they ever want to give up the ability <laughs> just to hit print, print, print? <laughs> I I really don't see that logistically, but I think that's why they're gonna uh, go to obviously to digital currencies rather than back to the gold standard. Unfortunately, um, you know, so they can assume even more control and also conveniently for them come off as a little bit more relevant. Uh, so, well, this guy says, hmm. Heidi, do you think gold is a safe investment now? I think it is. Yeah. I think it's a safe investment because it's not going to go to zero. Uh, it's. You know, it, there is a limited supply of that. They can't, they can't print up the the physical supply, but they can print up a bunch of IOUs, which is the paper supply. So that's the one that dictates the price right now. So you see, like the price is what sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred dollars. That's just the paper price. Go ahead and try to buy it for seventeen hundred. So that's where you get your your premiums from is the free market. So yeah, Raphael said. There isn't enough gold to back all that crap <laughs> coins yet. Anyway, exactly. exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. not a not a chance. They, they it could be fractional, but they still won't do that. Why? Why would government's not going to give back um, uh, sound money? They're not mm -hmm. because they're, it's it's once a government is addicted to heroin, which they are right now, which is you know having that Fed printing up all that money or currency. Yeah. that's. That's that's over. So the the government will always be on heroin. They will never get off. They'll never be able to to go in remission or whatever. I love when you get into your rants. You get some really epic uh, analogies. Anyway, okay. So we'll check back to the comments in okay. this section. So, Let's get on to. Did you want to go back to this? No, 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 no. Okay. okay so uh, J P Morgan prepares for a wave of default defaults. Okay. So J P Morgan now. And the rest are going to do that. So JP Morgan is one of the six banks that owns the Fed. 
um, and they will be definitely understanding what the situation is in uh, unemployment area. So this is, you know, part of the uh, just the snowball effect. Okay, so I'm just gonna say something's coming in a little. Okay, late. yeah. <laughs> Free market has been I gone don't for a while. forget the Donald Trump part. The Fed have ended the free market. Um, yes, the, that's what I've been. I keep saying to everybody, hey, you're going to see more and more articles. This is from even main. This is from Forbes. You know, it's actually being printed. They can't hide it anymore. You know, I mean, even the stupidest of stupid people can understand that there is no more free market. Like there's just none. Like, yeah, it's over. Okay, so. This is a, the next one's a really good one. Okay, so I want to talk about this. So quarantining yourself and you know social distancing, that's more of a luxury because in the real world well, for, where like, people like need to live, where your issues are, oh, I've run out of things on Netflix to watch. Yeah, that's first world problems, that is people. Absolutely first world. Yeah. Problem, so like people are going to be starving to death if they uh, quarantine themselves. You know, yes, Heidi and I have been around the world. Oh, so many different countries and a lot of uh, developing and underdeveloped countries as well. You know, we've been through them all or a, a ton Not of them, all of them but a ton of them. And yeah. so like we understand that, hey, people actually need to go out daily to get food and water like water that yeah. like and, you know, to feed their families. Otherwise, that's it. Like they're done. They don't. <laughs> the virus is the last thing on people's minds in many parts of the world. And w these parts of the world that it's on, the last thing on their minds are very populated. The, the, we're not, I'm not talking about little small towns. I'm talking about huge, huge cities that people need to go out and go get their food, you know, help their, even their neighbors and, and old people that, that are, you know, that, that need food as well. You know, we're, we're talking like people, some people that take care of, you know, their communities and stuff. So, yeah, the, and also like a, not to discount, you know, the threat that something like this uh, illness can be for them because their healthcare, you know, probably is non-existent. Let alone them being able to afford anything, whether it's the COVID or any other kind of flu or any kind of sickness. But so they're trying to decide if they can risk getting sick or if they can, you know, manage to not eat for another day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, perspective for sure. Yeah. So I just. Wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Um, okay, so Emirates. You brought this up this morning. You're like, hey, when are we going to fly Emirates Oh my again? gosh, so now they're going to require... I can't believe this. I thought you were joking. They're going to... Check the top. Okay, Emirates is going to require you to give a blood test. At the if gate you want. or whenever. <laughs> I guess I'm... it's at the gate. And they won't <laughs> allow for checked luggage anymore. I understand why now. What the heck? Why? It's, it's because you when you check luggage, you're putting it up in the overhead <sighs> next to someone else's, so there could be cross contamination there. The world is going to change. Travel it's is going to suck. I mean, <laughs> giving your blood. Giving your blood. So, so if you're you're either petrified of flying or you're petrified of needles, a lot of people are going to stop flying <laughs> after this. That's crazy. I mean, it's not funny. It's just ridiculous no. because we've been saying this, that your freedoms are going to be wiped away yeah. because of a f this. I and mean, did you, I don't know, did you say this already that it's going to probably affect the price of airlines? Because oh, yeah. So they're, they're going to need to afford. Equipment. Yeah, exactly. And personnel who are doing these. And the it's delays. Not, it's not going to be the flight attendants drawing your blood, by the way. You have so, to be a registered nurse to be able to do that. So right now it's Emirates. You know, you can only picture every other airline doing this anytime you want to jump on a flight so we'll see hopefully not too many follow suit that would suck okay so now people are getting pissed off about um you know the um quarantine quarantine all around the world germany uh places in the united states india india and then now sure. cape town you know, especially Cape Town because their rand is getting absolutely obliterated. Hmm. They're telling everybody to stay indoors so they can't make any money or any any currency. You know, any anything. Um, and yeah, they're they're not doing too well. You know, especially with the rand dropping like twenty five percent over the past three or four weeks. It's crazy. Hmm. Um, never seen anything like this. So okay, so now that get used to this. You'll have drones now. Uh, that will enforce social distancing, but this is just the beginning. You can only imagine 
There's going to be drones all the time watching over people. They're probably going to test. They're probably going to have drones. This is my guess that they are going to have an infrared or something that they're going to take your temperature. And if you are sick, you know, if you do have a temperature, you and everyone around you is going to be possibly quarantined. I mean, that's my guess. Who know. knows? Hopefully the public, uh, you know, protest, protest a little bit harder uh, Maybe. before that happens. Because we'll see. that's the thing I think people forget is the power that they have. Uh, like governments weren't created originally, I don't think, to, you know, micromanage every single thing that you do in your life. But for some reason, we've come to this place where most people think they can't function without government telling them what to do. Um, and like, they become just, neutered. That's what it is. So just wake up. Can I, can I set alarm for them so they can like wake up yeah. soon and hopefully they don't snooze it. So, so, okay. Last one. Okay. The coronavirus the is going to pro it's definitely paving the way for universal basic income. Yeah, it's like income. with the digital dollar and $2,000 a month for the next year. Uh, okay, so Spain is already putting this out. They're yeah. already going to go, hey, we're, we're, we're doing this, you know. And so, um, yeah, this will kill creativity. This will kill, like, innovation because people are going to get Your lazy. Your entrepreneurial state of mind is going to die because you have that, that safety net that you're always going to have. And it's just like you were saying with heroin – they're just trying to get you hooked on their heroin, so then you get lazy and and that, then you're reliant on heaven government. Heaven forbid you should you should you know be industrious and yeah. try to create something that could turn into more jobs for other people that could potentially pay them more money than this government check. So I encourage if you guys if you guys have the ability to save this money if you don't need it paycheck to paycheck, put it away and invest. If you've had this idea for a new company or an investment or something like. Take advantage of this. Uh, that's, I mean, and, and this is this is cash. This is fiat that's going to go directly. And don't accept into... it as a digital dollar, please. <laughs> yeah, please. Th this is currency that's going to go directly into the uh, economy. So this isn't. This is going to cause inflation. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is because more usually, dollars chasing after the same good. Usually, they send it right to the investment banks. Which you know put it right into the stock market, which is why the stock market is yeah. propped up, um, and it trickles down into the economy. So you don't see this uh, inflation, inflating price, or uh, inflating supply, deflation of, uh, of uh, inflating supply, you know, and what am I saying? Devaluing of the dollar mm -hmm. immediately with the people, which is why they've gotten away with this inflation for so long because it's so drawn out uh, effect but for this yeah that's a great point it's going to be instantly yeah man, so i mean we've already seen hyperinflation minimum right wages like destroy a lot of currencies especially the, the aussie dollar like i remember having a job there when i was i think i was like 20 Are you gonna say and uh right? and, and the minimum wage was 23 dollars or 22 or 23 dollars mm -hmm. an hour um and this is why Aussie dollar, all, like the Aussie dollar sucks. I mean, it costs so much for things because, you know, companies are paying more to people to for, for working. It's not like it's, you're not earning $23. You're, you're just getting it and you're going to. It's worth it's, less. Yeah, it's way worth way less, especially now. Um, yeah. So this is what happens when governments step in. And if you look at Singapore, yes. You know, they have a huge government there, whatever, but they do not have a uh, minimum wage there. And I think their average Singapore, income is yeah. like $60,000. Um, they're doing really well as well. So um, it just shows. Anyways, I just went off on a tangent there. No, it's but, a valid tangent. Yep. That's all I got. That's all, the... That's all I got, guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through some uh, questions here. Yeah. Or uh, let's see. Anybody have any questions? Let me take. <laughs> Try not to incite I, I, too much violence in these comments. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so what? Hmm. The universal income, the government dishing out free fiat out of thin air. Um, where are they going to get their taxes from? 
Does this exactly. mean they are... <laughs> Why do they bother taxing their citizens There's no for point. cash when all they need to do is hit the print button? It's because it's control. And <laughs> You know what? Let me go through one thing very first. Very psychological there. There, there was a, an article where they said uh, the, the, um, the government bailout for the small businesses uh, ran out of fiat. What happened? Did their printing press fail? Do you remember... Or when, something like that? I mean, because they can bail out trillions of dollars for their 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 billionaire friends but they ran like out of cash two, two weeks before that the guy was on an interview saying there will we don't have an issue we, we have an infinite money supply oh but not for you that but was not for you ca- sorry cash car, it, it's, yeah. it's for the other guys that will make us more money crazy because we want to make money we don't want you to make money yeah so anyways so, sorry if i cut you off there no, that's, that's kind of silly that's, but well we made it in under an hour. Sweet. This I'm is done. amazing. Yep. Okay, we should cut it off quick. Um, <laughs> if, if you want to check out Heidi's oh, new yeah. class. Yeah, so uh, I held a live stream for the members of my Patreon in the CT Club. You can go to patreon.com slash crypto tips. Join the CT Club. You'll have access to the live stream that I held last Wednesday. I had a, a, hand, a couple handfuls of people, so that was great to have um, you know all that feedback and questions being answered. Really end up one hour, hour 15 video about all the different wallet options that you can have. So for those of you who want to secure your investments in a smart way and you want to know all of the really, uh, I think, top security tips and tricks and best practices for, you know, using your wallets, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what will sacrifice your privacy, what will sacrifice your private keys. I think it's a really informative video, especially for those of you who are just now starting to dabble in cryptocurrencies. You want to get them off the exchange and into your own custody. Uh, it's a great, a great class. That's the first of many that I will be holding. Um, I've had other ideas for videos like, um, for example, how to make your life online more private just in general and also with cryptocurrencies, how you use them, how you store them. Uh, uh, what else? Do I, oh, like how to use private coins, maybe like coin mixers, how to privatize. It's probably tied into that. How to identify a potentially pr- uh, profitable cryptocurrency, what you should look for in the fundamentals and the analytics. Uh, and most importantly, of, uh, when we make a trade. Oh, yeah. We, well, that's not a class, but we do post on Patreon Again, for the CT Club, uh, when we make trades, what we're doing, what we're getting into. And your Ian, why. oh man, that. The, the, we made some good trades. Whew, so good. You can learn more about it in the CT Club. So good. Um, and additionally, I will be expanding into offering consultation services. So that will be another tier up for those who want to help support this channel. If you want to get some one on one, direct, specific uh, consultations, questions about anything, um, I'll be opening that up. So again, Join Patreon, and I'll be doing an announcement there when that's available. So cool. thank you for everyone who's in the live stream chat. Yeah, you guys thanks, are guys. great, epic conversations going. I love reading through these uh, later on. Definitely. Um, yeah, so glad to have you. We'll be back again soon. Mondays, we're doing this now that you know we're quarantined forever. Uh, we're not going to be traveling anytime soon. Or if we will, we'll let you know. But until then, every Monday, noon Eastern time, we'll be here going live filling you guys all in on all the stuff that we think you should know. So see you again Monday live. And in the meantime, I'll be having more crypto videos coming out to you. So hope you guys have a good one. Stay happy and healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>